Hello, welcome to Maths with Jay. So here we're going to be integrating by parts. The integral is a product of e to the power of a multiple of x and cosine of just x. But this method would work for e to the power of any multiple of x multiplied by either cosine or sine of a multiple of x. So let's start by writing down the formula. So here we've got that the integral of the product of u and dv by dx is equal to something that also contains an integral, but the integral on the right-hand side, the integral of v times du by dx, will be simpler than the integral we started off with. With the integral that we're using here, we are actually going to need to apply this method twice, this formula twice. So what we'll do is we'll start off by writing down u1 and dv1 by dx. So if you only need to apply the method once, you'd only need to write down u and dv by dx. But because we want to do it twice, we're going to be using subscript. So it'll be clearer when we get on to the next one. So we can choose to take u1 as either e to the 3x or cos x. And it's actually going to be easier to choose e to the 3x here, because in a moment we're going to be differentiating. If we had chosen dv1 by dx to be e to the 3x, we'd have to integrate to get v1, and then we'd end up with um, with a fraction. So not as easy. Right, so if we've chosen u1 to be e to the 3x, then dv1 by dx will be cos x. Right, so now we're ready to work out du1 by dx. And the other thing we'll need is v. And then when we've got those two things, we'll be able to apply the formula. Oh, that should be v1, shouldn't it? So to work out du1 by dx, we just look at um, u1. So it's e to the 3x. So we're differentiating, and that will give us 3e to the 3x. And working out v1 from the derivative of v1, we just integrate. So integrating cos x, and that will give us sine x. And now we're ready to use the formula. Should we just give the integral a name? Let's call it i. And then it will be easier to see what we're doing. Right, so using the formula, we are going to be multiplying u and v together. So u1 and v1 multiply together, give us e to the 3x times sine x. And then we're going to be subtracting the integral of v1 times du1 by dx. So that's going to be sine x multiplied by 3e to the 3x. So the first part isn't going to change, but we can simplify the integral. We can take the constant outside, and it's clearer if we write the e to the 3x first, then it's really obvious what we're finding the, uh, the sign of. So let's now write down the integral symbol, and e to the 3x sine x dx. So you can see that we've ended up with something that looks more complicated than what we started with. And we've got an integral there that we still can't do. And it looks very similar to that initial integral, doesn't it? E to the integral of e to the 3x sine x looks just as bad as the integral of e to the 3x cos x. But what we do is we now apply the method again. We apply the formula again. And we'll find that everything will work out all right. So what we're going to do is we're going to just concentrate on the integral. So let's give that a name. Let's say i1 is the integral of e to the 3x sine x dx. And now, because I'm applying the formula again, I'm going to be using the subscript 2. So here we need to decide what u2 is going to be. And now we don't actually have a choice. Having started off by, by choosing u1 as e to the 3x, we've got to continue by letting u2 be the e to the power of e to the 3x. So our dv2 by dx will be sine x. Remember, we're now looking at the integral i1. And now, so that we can use the formula again, we're going to work out du2 by dx and v2. So differentiating u2, we get 3e to the 3x. And integrating 
sine x we get minus cos x. So now using the formula our integral i1 is going to be the product of u2 and v2 first of all. Let's take the minus out of the front so it's e to the 3x times minus cos x so let's write that as minus e to the 3x cos x and then we're going to be subtracting 3e to the 3x multiplying minus cos x so there are two negatives there so we could write that as a plus and we can take the 3 outside the integral and then we're left with e to the 3x cos x. So when you get to this stage, it can be quite disheartening because it's like we've gone round in a complete circle and ended up with the integral we started with. But this is actually what we want at this stage. What we can do now is we'll leave the first bit as it is, it's not, got an integral, it's not got an integral in it. And then, remember we gave a name to the original integral, well we can see that that is therefore plus 3i at the end, because i is the integral of e to the 3x cos x. And I think we had better number one of our earlier equations. Let's call this one number 1. And I think we need a bit more space, don't we? Right, so I've moved things around a bit. Nothing should have actually disappeared, so hopefully that's, a, that's still clear. Let's just write down the first equation again, but instead of the integral of e to the 3x sine x, I'm going to write i1, because that's really what it is, isn't it? So I'm just rewriting equation 1. So i is e to the 3x sine x, minus 3i1. So that all that really is is the first equation. And then let's number the 1 down here, number 2. So we can now see that we can substitute from 2 into 1. So we've just found that integral i1 is minus e to the 3x cos x plus 3i. So that can go in here. And remember, what we're trying to do here is find the integral i. And now you can see that we're going to be able to do it, because we now don't have any integral symbols left. It's just a whole load of algebra where i can be found in terms of x. Well, in terms of e to the 3x, sine x and cos x. We just need to do a little bit of multiplying out and rearranging, and we'll be there. So, what can we do? Let's just multiply out this bracket, that would be a good idea, wouldn't it? So we've got e to the 3x sine x, that stays the same, minus 3 times minus whatever that is will be a plus, so plus 3e e to the 3x cos x, and then we've got minus 3 times plus 3i, so that's going to be minus 9i. So now we just add 9i to both sides to get 10i on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side, we could simplify by taking e to the 3x outside a bracket. And we've got sine x plus 3 cos x. And we're nearly there. All we need to do is to divide everything through by 10 and we'll have the integral that we want. So i is e to the 3x over 10 multiplied by sine x plus 3 cos x. So without doing any really hard integration, we've actually worked out what the integral is. And if you want to check your answer, how would you do that? Well, differentiate. So this is a product And I'll leave you to do that to make sure that when you differentiate this answer, you do end up with e to the 3x cos x.